business out of my Internet of Things and not worry about the connectivity. I know that if I sell my, my solution in Australia, it will work. South America will work. This is a massive ecosystem which has a track record of 30 years. If we are able to come up with a low power, low energy radio really to connect billions of sensors, it will totally change the ecosystem. So I hope release 13, 14, 15, and we're working on that, will enable this uh, narrowband LTE solution and really provide that connectivity. So let's move on. We have connected, you know, the internet, uh, we have connected people, phones and things. Is there anything else? And you have, have heard a little bit out of Gerhard's talk, really, and we believe, yes, there's so much more to the internet. So we want to design, you know, what I call the skills internet or the internet of skills, really. And 5G is a, is a great enabler. Actually, the tactile internet, you know, that vision which Gerhard was uh, talking about in the previous talk is a great technology which is underpinning that vision of a skills internet. So wouldn't, isn't it great? Wouldn't it be great if our best engineers could maintain a car somewhere in Africa? Our best surgeons could do an operation somewhere in Asia. I could feel when I shop or uh, somebody could teach me how to paint or I can teach somebody how to play the piano. So literally we democratizing labor here. We are distributing skills remotely. And that is the vision really of that type of network. And the underlying technology is exactly that tactile internet which get referred to. And what we need, uh, as you understood by now, is really, really low latency. And the reason is because in contrast to video, the transmission of touch requires a transmission of action and reaction. And if the reaction doesn't come back within a few milliseconds, we start to feel really, really dizzy or systems start to become really, really unstable. Now, Gerhard uh, put the millisecond into kind of in, in, in perspective. So a millisecond buys you essentially in, in free space, 300 kilometers. So this is 150 kilometers to go and 150 to come back. Now, if you do this in fiber, that's 30% less. And if you use real networking equipment, that goes down by another 80%. So the question is, how do you build a global network, this skills internet, if actually your range is limited to just maybe 10 kilometers or just a few miles? Now, here's a solution. You break physics, okay? The laws of physics. Now, I'm joking. We're not going to do that. We leave that to our respective physics departments. Uh, we are engineers, so we are trying to get it ready from an engineering point of view. But you understand that even as try as we have, the hardcore method of essentially making networks quicker, making the modulation schemes uh, shorter, making the TTIs shorter will not help because in the end of the day, you have a finite speed of light. Um, I'll come to that in a moment, but uh, I want you to understand that what we are after is really a very grand vision here. And, um, and that is a fundamental shift we want to invoke, a little bit the same shift as the internet has undergone from a very propriety type of communication artifact to something which is based on standardized networking technologies, standardized audio and video codecs became the really low cost internet we know today. We have commoditized the edges. That's what we did. That's why it scaled so massively. Now, when you look to the tactile, you know, the skills internet, we are not there yet. So we have really high, high cost propriety systems, like you may have an ABB uh, uh, operation device or a Siemens device. They're very, very expensive. So we need to standardize the network, which is the tactile internet, which Gerhard referred to, but that is not all. We need to standardize the codex, the haptic codex, and we work on that quite a lot. We need to bring in a lot of intelligence because that's the only way of beating the global delay. And once we have done that, we get this standardized tactile internet, which then enables essentially this economy of scale, which we are really after. So if you look at what we need from a technology point of view, what you see on the left hand is a set of controllers uh, they don't have to be in the same place. These can be surgeons in different places in the world. They essentially control a robotic surgery device or a haptic glove 
somewhere else. Again, it doesn't have to be the same location. Communication happens through the internet and happens through the cellular network on maybe both ends. Now, as you can see, we need to transmit this bidirectional haptic control very, very quickly. So therefore, together with uh, Dresden, uh, with Gad's group and uh, other people in the field, we are working on this tactile internet, uh, but we also work on this uh, haptic encoder here, which is constructed both from the kinesthetic signal, which is the signal which uh, dictates uh, essentially mechanical movement, as well as the tactile stuff, which is the touch. It's very complicated. There are loads of unanswered questions who work here with the robotics department on that. And how to beat the delay? Well, with artificial intelligence, you are able to predict quite a lot of movement. So therefore, we don't need to buy a minute of prediction. We just need to buy 50 milliseconds, maybe 100 milliseconds, just enough time to get around the planet. So that's what we are trying to build in a standardized way, package it up, and enable essentially this economy of scale for these type of networks. So let me move on now. How to make that really happen? So the first thing I want to show here really is our um, Ericsson King's College London 5G Tactile Internet Lab. So I'm actually sitting in this lab as we speak. And uh, I want to show you in situ right now essentially one of the experiments. So let me just uh, move that around. You see Hamid here, Hamid say hello, mm -hmm. okay. You see Toktam here, Toktam is our lead on that lab, so a few people of you know her. Let me go to the actual, the actual experiment. So we have here Marcelo and Costas, and Costas is going to show you the tactile feedback experiment. I want to tell you just that we experimented a lot with the delay here. We figured out that the same thing which Gerhard said, that about 10 millisecond end-to-end -end round trip delay is something we can tolerate. Anything above that becomes really interesting. I want to show you what happens when we go above the 10 millisecond. So Costas now is showing essentially here a phantom thing. So what Costas is using is a phantom remote control, which is moving something remotely. And as you can see, his hands are being moved in a really, in a resonant way. So things don't go according to a very slow control. He is, there's a feedback mechanism which goes into resonance and couples that such that the whole system essentially cannot be controlled anymore. Thank you, Gustav, right? So um, that is the type of stuff we're doing here in the lab currently. And of course, connecting that in real time with our haptic robotics development downstairs in the basement of King's. I'm not sure you know this, by the way, that Maxwell was very active in King's and two out of his uh, four Maxwell equations were discovered uh, just right, right here. So the digital era, in a sense, started at King's College London. Okay, let me move on now. Um, we need new tech thinking. So um, we, need, uh, we need to understand that to make that happen, we need to change fundamentally how 5G is designed. Uh, one thing we work on is essentially how to decouple the up and then the down link. So what happens in the, at the moment, if you do a phone call, your phone call goes to the same base station up and down link. It turns out with the whole heterogeneous system to decouple that, essentially a down link comes from one base station and your up link goes to another, gives not only massive capacity gains, but also massive uh, reliability gains. And we really need that. For industry 4.0, you need like seven nines after the, the comma, right? The other thing we need to do is to get rid of the core network as, as an infrastructure, simply because of the delay. It introduces a lot of delays, which I don't want to go into details now, but uh, we are working on that. So please come back to me if you're interested in that. We also need to change how standards work. So uh, cellular currently is the only ecosystem where everybody sits around the table and decides on new things. And it takes a long time, it's natural. It's very natural, but we need to break it up. I call that the transformation from the iceberg world to a Pandora world. It's a bit like the computing industry. So you don't see Google, uh, Facebook, Intel, and Cisco sit together every 10 years and come up with a new internet. So we should bring cellular to the very same stage. And that's happening with some experimentation now on Etsy. So again, let me know if you're interested. There are also some really interesting uh, changes in the business model. 
So currently the business model is telco operator, vendor, and uh, you know, the whole supply chain. That is massively changing in the 5G ecosystem. The vendors are essentially getting the telco space and the telco companies in the over-the-top uh, company, uh, company space. And uh, as an example, you see Ericsson now talking a lot to Volvo or to Skanska. And uh, these companies are essentially construction companies or car companies. And once Ericsson strikes a deal, that equipment stays with the Volvos and the Skanskas for the next 20 years. And that brings Ericsson in a really strong position to procure the cheapest operator. Whereas before it was exactly the opposite, okay? So essentially the power is, power is shifting with the uh, B2B market growing in the 5G ecosystem. And that is very, very interesting. Now let me finish my keynote here by uh, showing you a video essentially. I hope it works. And what I like to do is when I do new things is to go out in the street and ask people whether they would use new technology. So I went out and uh, told them a little bit what this tactile internet or the skills internet would do. And uh, I, I essentially gathered their feedback. Would they use it or not? So let's, let's give it a go. I'll, I'll bring the camera down one second. Yeah. 